So here we have a new Canon camcorder. So hi, so who are you? I'm Paul Atkinson. I'm the product specialist for Canon Europe for the Pro Video camcorder range of the Cinema EOS range. And this is a very anticipated, very exciting camcorder for the pros? Yep, this is the long-awaited replacement for the XF305. Uh, this is the XF705. Yeah. Uh, a bit of a world first for us. This is the first pro-level camera that actually uses H.265 HEVC compression as its recording format, or main recording format. So that saves uh, bitrate? Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of advantages to this. We're still recording at 160 megs per second. Um, onto SD card at 422 10-bit. 422 10-bit? Yep. 4K 60 and 50, right? Yep. And you can switch? Yes, you can. Yeah, this you, one, you can yeah. switch this one. There's you no need switch. to uh, go to a service center. So 422 10-bit internally to two dual SD uh, UHS-2 cards. Yes. And then uh, um, how's uh, the sensor? Is it one inch? Or? It's a one inch sensor. Um, yeah. We can do some other things with this as well. We can also record direct HDR, and we can do both flavors. We can do PQ and HLG. We can also, by fitting an external recorder, yep. we can um, record simultaneous HDR and SDR streams. Even more clever, we can also add on to that the ability to adjust the exposure to one or the other. So if you expose correctly for oh. HDR, the camera will automatically reset for the SDR plus or minus up to 7.5 decibels. But it doesn't let you do both at 4K 60, right? Um, yes, it will be both really? 4K. Yep. You can do HDR and SDR, yep. two streams at yes. 4K 60 at the same time. Yes, one internal. The SDR will always be external, the HDR internal. Oh, wow. Cool. Uh, but uh, when it's HLG format, it's mm -hmm. kind of uh, uh, compatible with both with SDR displays and HDR, right? That's correct. That's in the, one file. Yeah, that's the beauty of the HLG system. So for broadcast in particular, where you can't guarantee that people are going to have a full PQ capable monitor, the HLG is the one to use. We can also, um, on the back, we've put a 12G SDI output, which means yeah. we only need one cable. Um, and again, that's 422 10 bit um, in. HEVC and we can do full HD in the same as well. So there's all the ports you want down here? Yep, so we have, we have 12G SDI for a single connection to an external use. Uh, you can take the same out of HDMI as well. Uh, also IP streaming at 16 yeah. megs per second. So we can open up all these little caps for you. You'll see so you have a gigabit Ethernet right there? Yep, so that'll do 16 megs per second live IP streaming in 4K. HDR, um, H26, H265, 422 10 bit. Streaming, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's six, six, uh, 60, only oh, 160. 16 megs per second. 60 megs, 60 megabits? 16, megabit? 1.6. Yeah. Ah, 1.6. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not 4K 60 and all that stuff. It's still 4K, so it's still ah. 60p, but the data transfer rate is 16 megs per second. 16. Yeah. So it's very compressed, right? Yes. But it's kind of like uh, what they do on Netflix. Netflix is uh, that kind of bit rate. It's H.265, it's 15 megabits, so that means yeah. it has a very strong compression right there, maybe. It does, but it's also, if you think of this being used in documentary or news gathering, it's a, an efficient way to get stuff back to your studio, to your newsroom. You could also stream it over LTE and stuff like that, perhaps. Uh, if you I use one of those external yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. But again, that's the beauty of the connectivity yeah. of the camera. And lots of XLR? Yeah, we've got two XLRs, um, one at the front and one at the back. And the reasoning behind this is... If you put a radio mic here, you've got four channel audio. You can put a radio mic here, that connects in, that helps with the balance of the camera. And so then a wired one or another wireless at the front. So you could uh, you could also perhaps, uh, the interviewer can have a label. Correct. And then have the other one as a shotgun, maybe. Yep, absolutely. And that's kind of like the perfect combination. Yep. But it is uh, kind of big, right? Is that uh, the 305 was smaller? Or? Uh, this is slightly smaller than the 305 ah, and smaller. slightly lighter. Um, we've got the multi-position multi, the multi screen as well, yeah, um, you... so we can have it this way up. Yeah. Uh, let's turn it on for you, get an idea of what the screen looks like. I can have this through on this side as well. If I was self-shooting, I can turn it that way. It looks like there's two displays, but it's not. No, it's not. It's just the one. Um, wow. The other feature that we've put on this is um, we've incorporated dual pixel CMOS autofocus. And as a benefit of that, 
for those that want to manually focus, you've got the focus assist system on there as well. And that uses the dual pixel AF technology to give you manual focus confirmation. So you can use the dual pixel just to make sure your manual is well yeah. made. So if you look you on have these, zebra kind of stuff. If you look on the screen here, you see this little GUI here. And that tells me whether I need to move the lens, the focus left or right. And as soon as everything goes green, I'm in focus. And the importance of that is because you are filming 4K, it's absolutely imperative that your focus is exactly accurate. There is no room for error in 4K filming. Yeah, and it's uh, the fastest dual pixel implementation in Canon's history. I mean, you have um, different kinds of dual pixels, we right? We do. I mean, this, this is um, comparable to the C700, C200 speed. And uh, 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 is it like tap to focus also? Yeah, absolutely. But you, uh, when you tap to focus, do you have to tap something to tap something else? You can just tap. No, just tap. Because the, the GH10, uh, it, used to, it seems that the UI has something where you have to e exit and come back to the next. No, all I need to do is need to make sure that I'm in auto focus. I can press that one as well, but I don't really want to do that. I can go to auto focus. I now have my cursor here. I can make that a small area or large area. If I want to choose my point of focus, if I go onto the stand, I can say, okay, I want to focus here. A touch, it focuses. A touch, it focuses. And it's instant. And uh, what's the price? Um, the price on launch is going to be around about 7,000 euros uh, plus tax. Um, which, again, for this kind of level of camcorder, I think is, is, is fairly competitive. There's been a massive amount of interest from right across different swathes of the industry in this already. Bearing in mind, we only announced it two weeks ago. But some people in the professional areas think that HT65 is a little bit harder to do post-processing on, right? Um, by the time this goes on sale, we are working with partners, creating editing systems. Um, we know that um, Avid will be available as a plugin on launch. I'm confident the other providers of NLE will be following very closely behind. And there's 160, but can you even tune it down? You said that the live stream was 16 only. Yeah. Does that mean you have options to go lower if you want to do 50 or when something? You, it's, it's all variable bit rate. Um, but when you are recording, uh, you, if you record to full HD, H.264, then you can bring it down to about 45 megs per second. Nice. So that's very exciting to see some H.265 happening. Uh, uh, so it starts here, but perhaps it, it might go in the, in the more consumer-oriented cameras later? I think, um, I think it would be a, a, a good thing to do because it gives you the ability to record a 4K file, uh, but to relatively low cost and very easily available recording media. And that's yeah. the big attraction, that we can go, we can buy an SD card pretty much anywhere these days, uh, even the newer uh, specification ones. There's no need to use the V90, right? It's just a, a, a little bit uh, more affordable SD card would be fine uh, because it's only in 160 megabit. Yeah, per second. I mean, I mean yeah. that, that, Which would, is, that would be fine for it. Yeah, and it's got all the manual controls people want. Yep, so you have three ring control at the front for focus, zoom, and iris. Um, the zoom rocker on the side here is the same as we find on our broadcast lenses. So this is much uh, stronger, uh, much more durable. Um, all the controls are logically placed again, controls to the left of the camera, connections to the right, and it's little things. It's little things like being able to find out what your audio status is, and instead of having to go into a status menu and go find audio, you just press the button you discovered there, and your audio status is projected straight onto the screen. And it's got a long battery life? Or? Yeah, um, around about 80 minutes of continuous recording is the best information I have at the moment. Uh, but until we start getting this out and using it and, and get those figures squared away. There's no chance that this nice, big, beautiful screen is uh, 4K, no? Uh, no, it's a That 4K. would be cool. Yeah, it would be cool, um, but it's a very bright screen. It allows you to look at something if you record in HDR. Um, it uh, allows you to get a good representation of what that footage is going to look like once it's left the camera. If you didn't want to use the direct HDR recording. You've also got the ability, and this is a first on a non-cinema camera, we've put Canon Log 3 onto this as well. So you could record in Canon Log 3 uh, and then to follow traditional workflow instead of going through the, uh, the direct system. So I'm excited about the H.265. I think it's very cool, but uh, there, there's no option for H.264 for people who want that? Or? There is an H.264 option, that's XFAVC, and that will be the 4208 bit. 
428. So if you want 422 10-bit, HLG, HEVC, yeah. and it's 160, but did you say there was a lower? In XF AVC in 4208 bit, yes. Ah, but uh, if you want to do the, you, you can't tune the bit rate, it's fixed at 160. It's 160, yeah. So that's um, I think you can come down to 110, actually. Yeah. Uh, so what we'll do is we can go out of this one, uh, we go into our menu, uh, and then we see on the menus it's all very logically based. Including IR color. This is the CP, so this is the preset with our normal. And you can see the options we have in here. So we can have wide DR as we have with the other cameras, PQ and HLG, Canon Log 3. And you can choose Rec 709 or yeah, 2020. Or 2020 straight in. So these are all presets in the custom picture menu. Open up again. We come down to recording format here. And you can see down here, yeah, so 160 or 110 makes per second. So you have the 110 option, yeah. which is still going to be 4K60. Yeah. Nice. And if, we could, if you can go back, uh, and there you have uh, XF HEVC, and that's yeah. the one where you can choose uh, the H264 there as well, right? Uh, yeah, so I've come up here, uh, and now I've come down to XF ABC. I'm still on 50p. But now I'm 45 megs per second. My streaming output signal. The camera tells me automatically what it, what it is I'm going to be sending things out at. But then, uh, then uh, it would be external through the HDMI if you do the two or, two streams. Or 12 GSDI. Or the SDI. Yeah. Cool. So uh, available. Um, sales start is anticipated for early December. And uh, what are the customers? Uh, broadcast? Uh... Broadcast, independent filmmakers, um, anybody that's used an XF305, and there are a lot of those people out there. Uh, it's been a really good workhorse camera. Uh, it's been around a long time. The 300 is already um, discontinued. The 305 will be discontinued fairly soon. Um, so, yeah. I, that I was just a 1080p, right? Yeah, um, the 305. yeah that was uh, 4228 bit MPEG 2. 1080p. Yep. And so it's a big jump. Big jump. Um, and I think to have manageable size for this kind of product, I think HEVC is, is actually the logical thing to do. Everybody's been waiting a long time for this. I really do believe that we've got it very right with this camera. The, the 405 was kind of like a different thing a little bit. It was sm smaller. is a different market. It's a different, it's for, um, it's perfectly fine for news gathering as a small news gathering camera. It meets um, the, the required criteria of 4208 bit, which is perfectly acceptable. Um, but this one gives customers that 422 10-bit option. All right. So there it is, uh, HEVC 4K60, 10-bit 422, HLG, all this stuff to dual SD right here. Um, very exciting. That. Uh, that this comes out uh, for this kind of market, but potentially could come out and you know for all the other Canon stuff. Eventually. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I don't I can't talk about future plans, but um, we've got this technology. We're the first um, major manufacturer to have a camera at this level. Obviously, there are other cameras that record H.265, uh, but by incorporating the MXF wrapper, hence the XF XF HEVC, um, we're able to have all the metadata as well.